Data science is about using statistics to draw insights from data, from product recommendations on Amazon to bank loan offers and fraud detection. The potential use cases are endless. Data science is one of the most talked about industries on the planet. And yet for many, the subject remains complex, technical and unapproachable. Well, today we're going to change that. Welcome to Data Science and Machine Learning Fundamentals. I'm Seb Taylor, and I lead the Business Intelligence and Data Analysis team here at CFI. With the help of my colleague, Lester Leong, we're going to break down the world of data science into digestible parts, explaining all the key techniques and terminology. Whether it's machine learning, regression, classification, data mining, or computer science, I want you to leave with no doubt as to how these pieces fit together. We'll even look at what skills, tools, and what roles exist to support the world of data science. By this point, you'll see why machine learning plays such an important part in data science. So that will be a big focus for the rest of the course. We're going to show you that machine learning is not as scary as it sounds. You'll see how businesses can use these models to make predictions about future or unknown events. Whether you're a data analyst or even a C-level executive, you should understand the basics of these techniques. Data scientists might be technically gifted, but they rely heavily on business knowledge to inform their strategy, decision-making, and models. We'll take you through what you need to know to talk data science with your team, understand model outputs, or get started with your own analysis. But don't be fooled. Just because we're keeping it simple doesn't mean we won't take you through some more complex concepts. From p-values, Bayesian models, and evaluation metrics, Consider this your comprehensive introduction to data science and machine learning. As well as short lessons and interactive exercises, we'll give you the chance to test your knowledge with an end of course quiz. Let's get started. Data science is all about creating data-driven insights that help us deal with uncertainty. Insights might be predictions, estimations, or decisions that help answer a wide range of questions. Questions like, which type of customer is most likely to buy our product? What type of market regime are we entering? When will we run out of warehouse stock? Or even how many ice creams should we order given the forecast for next week? These questions sound very similar to business intelligence, and it's true that they're often confused. But there's one key difference that was mentioned in our intro to BI course, which is that BI is generally backward looking and provides descriptive analysis about our observations. Instead, data science is about using those past observations to help us make predictions, estimations, or decisions about scenarios that present us with uncertainty. Many data science scenarios focus on predictions about the future. Let's take a look at a few example questions to make sure we understand the difference. A startup may ask, what proportion of our crowdsourced investors invested $200 or less? This question is backwards looking. The answer describes the nature of past investments, and we can calculate the answer using basic math and stats using the data we have about investments. This question belongs firmly in the realm of business intelligence. A bank may ask, what proportion of our loans were issued to at-risk customers? Again, the question is backwards looking. The answer describes the loans we issued. And again, we can calculate the answer using math. This question belongs in business intelligence. Finally, a retail store may ask, what proportion of our Q1 forecasted sales come from the pet food category? At a glance, we're talking about forecasts. So it's tempting to think that future must mean predictions and therefore data science. But the key here is that we already have our Q1 forecasted sales. All we're doing is describing what proportion of the forecast comes from pet food. So this again is descriptive and therefore business intelligence. So all of these examples show that BI typically describes existing data. Now let's look at some data science examples. A financial institution may ask, Based on what we know about past transactions, which of these new financial transactions is likely to be fraudulent? With these predictions, they might perform further checks or enhance risk mitigation. 
This is data science. A manufacturing company may ask, based on our sensor data, when is this critical component of this machine likely to wear out? This estimation may help the company to anticipate failures, perform preventative maintenance, and avoid costly downtime. These predictions are data science. Finally, an e-commerce company may ask, based on our sales data, which of our high-value customers are most likely to leave? In this case, the prediction is likely to help the company make strategic choices to protect long-term revenue. Again, these predictions are data science. In summary, data science is all about making predictions and estimations within uncertain or future scenarios. So far, we've described business intelligence as backward-looking and descriptive, and data science as forward-looking or predictive. Let's try and dive into those definitions and a few others to see exactly what they mean. Descriptive analysis simply gives us a view of who, where, when, how many, and what exactly happened. This is clearly the realms of business intelligence. We're dealing with facts. Diagnostic analysis tells us why something happened or what was the leading cause. Our metrics may give us clear views of those leading causes, but as soon as we start to work with uncertainties and predictions, you could potentially say that this question lies in both business intelligence and data science. Predictive analysis, as we've seen, gives us a most likely view of the future or of an unknown variable. This is clearly data science. Finally, prescriptive analysis provides us with the likely best course of action in order to achieve a given outcome. And since we're dealing with uncertainties and probabilities of actions in the future, again, we're dealing with data science. So it's interesting to see how all these types of questions come together and where they sit on this spectrum of analysis and decision making. And so for the remainder of this course, we're going to be focusing on everything related to this world of data science. The world of data science is often represented with this Venn diagram, showing the intersection of the key skills required, which are statistics and analysis, domain knowledge, and computer science. Let's make sure we clearly understand each of those terms. Statistics and data analysis is the process of extracting insights from data using maths and statistical analysis. Domain knowledge is the knowledge about how an industry or how a business operates. This helps data scientists and more generally analysts to know what to measure, how to interpret data, and how to best support leaders and decision makers. Computer science is the realm of coding, of automation and data engineering, and software development. The applications of computer science are broad and often require advanced coding skills. Data analysis can be thought of as the application of stats or analysis to a specific business or domain. You may have some basic automation, but generally you're slicing and dicing data or doing calculations looking for insights. Software development or data engineering is about using computer science and coding to solve business problems. You might be coding a database or building a system to capture customer data. Finally, machine learning is the intersection between computer science and statistics and analysis. Tools and coding skills help automate statistical analyses to help us learn quickly from big data. So in summary, we've established that data science uses statistics, computer science, and domain expertise to draw insights and predictions from data. I mentioned in the last video that this is a really common Venn diagram that you see to explain the key skills of data science. But there's one change I'd like to make just to add a bit more detail. So previously we said that computer science helps turn statistics into machine learning. We also said that computer science helps businesses develop software to solve business tasks. And that was called software development. And it's worth noting that whilst these two types of computer science both rely heavily on coding, they are quite different. So I'd like to break this Venn diagram into two sides and rename each section. We have coding for data analysis on the left, and we have software and data engineering on the right. Now, as well as being a helpful separation of those skills, 
This also helps us to show exactly what our syllabus focuses on here in BEDA, as we focus on the left-hand side of this data science diagram. The domain knowledge is going to be specific to whatever industry you're working in, but what's common is the data analysis techniques, the statistical techniques, and how we use coding to change that into machine learning. Let's put skills aside for a moment and take a look at how exactly we turn data into insights. And we can roughly define this as a five-step process. First, we have data collection and storage, which is about capturing information, ensuring its quality, and storing it in accessible locations like databases. Suppose we want to predict and identify fraudulent transactions. Before we do anything else, we need to collect data about past transactions. We might collect usernames, credit history, and all sorts of other data. But importantly, we also need to show which of these past transactions were fraudulent so we can learn to spot the patterns. After all, if we can't define which transactions were fraudulent in the past, how can we hope to make those predictions in the future? Next, we have transforming data for projects. This step is about optimizing our data for the specific project we're working on and selecting features or data points of interest. Perhaps we want to combine or manipulate transactions from multiple datasets, filter out some less important items, or adjust the structure of our data to make it a little more usable for our analysis. At this point, we're now ready to identify fraud with the statistical model. So naturally, the next step is statistical and predictive analysis. This is where the magic happens, and this is the area you'll hear most about when you first venture into data science. This is where we build models or implement algorithms that can start to spot the patterns in our data. In our scenario, we would train the model to identify the leading indicators of fraudulent transactions. We use a variety of statistical and analytical models to help us identify and act on these patterns, which we'll explore in more detail later on. Once we have a working model, we move on to model evaluation. And this is where we test how well the model is performing. And often we'll present results with data visualization. So we might ask, which of our models are most effective at identifying fraudulent transactions? We'll see later that models are rarely good at everything, and we actually have to decide what business objectives do we want them to optimize. We'll explore this more later. Suffice to say that model evaluation is arguably the most important step in the whole process, especially for business leaders. Finally, we're ready to share insights with the business. This may involve sharing dashboards and reports to business users, or it may involve deploying our models into some automated process. Either way, this information will share real-time information identifying risky transactions. Whilst the steps are typically described in this order, an often highlighted point about the data science process is that it's quite cyclical. We often need to return to a previous step to improve the work we've done, the data we've collected, or the model we've built before we settle on a final solution. In the last video, we looked at the five steps of the data science process. I'd like to look at that a bit closer, but in the context of machine learning. We've established that machine learning is a technique used to gain insights or make predictions from data. And importantly, it's using coding. Now, although machine learning does follow these five steps, there are a few specific bits of terminology that are used in the machine learning world. These are loading and cleaning data, exploratory data analysis, feature engineering, model building, and model evaluation and visualization. As you can see, the terms are quite similar, but these are just how they're referenced in the machine learning world. Loading and cleaning data is about ensuring our data is clean and tidy, removing any errors or anomalies, or at least dealing with them in a consistent way, as well as dealing with missing data points. Exploratory data analysis helps us understand what can we learn at a glance from our data. Can we explore the data types or any obvious relationships perhaps in our data? Feature engineering is where we manipulate that data into an optimal format for analysis. 
And so as you can see, that has a big overlap with transforming data. Model building is where we start to use our data for its intended purpose. We build models that can analyze data, make predictions, or quantify uncertainty in some way. Model evaluation and visualization is where we evaluate and compare the performance of models. This can help us go back and improve the model before we have to translate all the stats and jargon into meaningful outputs for our users. And remember, again, this process is not as linear as it looks. We may decide that we need to collect more data or modify the categories or grouping used to summarize transactions. The evaluation of results might bring up new questions or new project objectives. The point is that anywhere in the process, it's possible and often necessary to cycle back.